Good evening, everybody, or good morning if you're watching this on Monday morning. Uh, just a quick congratulations. We have made it to finals week. It's a four-day week. We've got Wednesday off uh, in observance of Veterans Day. So hopefully you will take time to think about that, to thank a, a veteran. If you happen to be one yourself, thank you um, for your service and everything you've done for your country. We're going to go ahead and get started right now. Um, this is a, an optional watch. Um, this should last less than 15 minutes. Uh, it's Capturing, uh, Capturing Kids Heart Showcase Preview Survey. Uh, we gave this out in Troy time about two weeks ago, and we had a pretty good uh, push as far as how many kids take, took it. It was about 750 students and about 45 of our staff members. We just wanted to get a sampling and kind of see how we're doing. It kind of gave, a, gave us a baseline gauge on how we're excelling uh, virtually in a distance world. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So let me click on here. The way the uh, slideshow is set up is it gives you kind of the teacher's practices or perspectives from the green side um, on your left, and then also the student's viewpoint, their perceptions on the right, on the gold side. And everything's set up as if you remember, if you took the uh, survey in an Excel format, it's uh, explore, I'm sorry, engage, explore, communicate, which is more of the, the lesson part of it. We talk a little bit about learning targets. And then of course we've got empower our students and then launch our students. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, one of the first questions we asked is uh, uh, of our teachers is, is they have a plan to meet and greet students as they come into their uh, Google Meet calls. And at that point, we uh, about half the teachers took the survey, about 84% of them feel they do it constantly, which means at least two out of every three classes, um, maybe even three out of cl three classes. If they're doing it like one to two classes, we consider that a sometimes, and nobody indicated it was, it was a nod. It just didn't happen. Um, from the student's perspective, um, they felt their teachers uh, that they're, whose classes they're in uh, consistently are doing it two or three classes a day. Sometimes uh, less than 10% is more like maybe one to two times a day. And very few of them, I can't remember the exact number it was, I think it was like eight of the 750-ish kids felt that just wasn't happening. So again, I don't know how quickly the kids race through the questions or fully understand them. Um, when we take it, this uh, survey again in probably January, we'll be doing it with a flipping group. Uh, probably gonna have teachers in Troy time kind of help kids through with some of the, the questions in case kids have any, we wanna be as accurate as we can be. Okay, I'm gonna kind of race through these now. You can kind of see how the format was set up, kind of the teacher's perspective, the way we're practicing, and then from the student's viewpoint. Okay, here we go. And at the bottom there, you'll see uh, what part of Excel we're talking about. So we're still in Engage. Uh, teachers using a welcoming tone of voice. 100% um, of the teachers feel they're doing it. From the student's viewpoint, we're doing very well. Um, not quite 100, but pretty darn good. Um, the next one, we're still in Engage. Uh, I periodically use activities to help build safety, whether you're doing icebreakers, whether you're just using your breakout rooms, create more comfortability. Um, whatever you're doing. But again, uh, about half and half in terms of consistently and then sometimes and very few say they're not. Uh, it's something we want to do so kids feel safe in the calls. And from their viewpoint, it looks like they feel like we're doing an outstanding job. So thank you for that. The next one, now we're getting into explore. This is kind of the good things we do, whether you call it good things or good news or tell me something good or you're using it as a study break, a brain break. I know some teachers were doing that when we were back in the brick and mortar uh, way of doing teaching. And that's perfectly a great way to do it, especially in those 80 minute periods. It gives you a little break, it gives something kids to look forward to also. We don't have the hustle and bustle of the hallways, you know, to kind of get the kids cortisol to come down a little bit with good things. So I can see using that more strategically. Um, also extending the good things as far as asking kids kind of open-ended questions, uh, really to show your authenticity as far as being um, interested. And the kids feel like we're doing a pretty great job overall when you look at that. That's kind of their viewpoint. Um, and uh, so good job. We're still in Explore. This is more about journal writing, which is uh, kind of reflective activities kids could do to kind of share their lives with their students a little bit. 
I'm sorry, with their teachers a little bit. And uh, as we know, uh, we have a school-wide AVID strategy. Every one of us, our teachers should be doing a quick write every quarter. If you haven't done that already, make sure you do it this week because we are just about a couple teachers short of being 100%. We want to hit that goal. From the student's viewpoint, very similar, very similar in terms of their perceptions and the way we think we're practicing it. Um, hopefully we can see that go up and see total elimination of blue by second quarter and depending on when we take it, of course. Um, we're still in Explore. I review the previous day's learning targets. Learning targets are a given. That's something we do as a teacher tight. Uh, same with success criteria. And it's definitely part of our Cell 5D framework. We have to do that daily. We have to do it with each lesson. Kids need to know how well they're doing. And then also, excellent teachers always go back to the previous day's learning targets. That's one of the things we want to make sure that students are realizing we're doing. That help our, helps articulate previous learning into the new learning. All right, so that's a communication piece. Um, I've established expectations for students concerning procedures in my virtual classroom. I've noticed classes are pretty darn seamless. So I thought maybe we're doing a really good job with that. And it looks like teachers are being very intentional. And overall, I think the kids are feeling it if you look at that. Now, sometimes they may not feel it so great. And I don't even know why. I'm going to guess some of that has to do with technology. And sometimes we have little breakdowns, whether it's uh, bandwidth or whatever. I know that kind of is kind of our normal. Um, and I'm sure that plays into it, too, because I know it's not always seamless. But you guys just keep working hard and go to a plan B seamlessly. But we never know how kids are reading that. Um, I'm affirming my students on a regular basis. Um, that has to do with the way we project our care towards kids, kind of understanding where they're coming from. And I think the kids are feeling like we're doing a pretty good job. We'd like to see a little bit more consistency with that. Next one is I model active listening by using the solar model. If you remember that, it's about squaring up. So that'd be looking into the camera, open stance. Uh, I don't know how that would look in a camera situation since we kind of just see our faces. Uh, leaning in, I know that some teachers do that when they launch, they like to lean in or make emphasis. Um, you want to do that when you're listening to students also, and then eye contact, and then obviously a response. And the kids feel like we're doing a fantastic job. So keep up the good work. And uh, I see some of that blue area on the teacher side. That's definitely something you could be intentional about. Um, I'm appropriate, appropriately addressing issues with my students. And likewise, the kids feel like we're doing a pretty good job. There's a, there's a little bit of a maybe a small disconnect there, nothing that's really earth shattering. Um, the blue area there, I'd, I'd love to be able to talk to those kids and say, what is it you've seen that happened that didn't get addressed? And uh, But we're not gonna do that. We have no idea um, who does these surveys. So the next one is communicate. I'm sharing appropriate details about myself and this is about building relationships and making yourself more relevant for your students. And I think the kids overall are, are seeing that. I think, um, and I'm not sure what their motivation is for checking off, you know, all the time consistently or sometimes. I don't know if that means they want to see more or that's just what they're seeing. Um, but anyway, I think that was a pretty good result. Um, the next question had to do with care and just really caring about your kids. And we didn't ask that question because we just, we just know you do. Uh, but we did ask the question to the kids. My teachers care about their students and they care about me. And I think that that's a great result right there. And again, I'd love to talk to the kids in the blue. And you never know. They could just be having a bad day that day or, or be mad at their principal for all we know. Um, communicate. I call out and I'm eliminating sarcasm and moodiness from my, our classroom interactions. That's the way we're kind of rolling it out as teachers. And oops. I went too fast. And that's the way kids are seeing it. So pretty darn similar. So keep working on that. Uh, the next one was a yes or no question. It had to do with uh, distance learning norms for our classroom. And we developed those back in August, uh, early September. Every department has them. And if you're not sure and you're not putting them into use, I would expect you to talk to your department chair and get a little remind on that. And overall, it looks like the kids are feeling like we're doing a nice job. Uh, the next one is about social contract, um, and it looks like about, uh, you know, about half of the people that took it feel like they're doing a consistent job, and I don't know where you guys are, are right now with that. I do know we had a couple of bumps in the early going, and what we found out when push came to shove, some of the students, um, they were in classrooms where there was, 
where there was not empowerment happening. It was more kind of the teacher top down, here's the way we're going to roll forward. And so there wasn't a lot of buy-in from these kids. So we've since gone into those classes, had conversations with the teachers and, and uh, hopefully we can do a better job quarter two. We really need kids to have opportunities to have some say in the way classrooms go. Ultimately, the teachers are, are empowered to be the authority in the classroom, but things just work better when kids have buy-in. Um, the next one is using nonverbal signals. I'm not quite sure how you guys are doing that, whether you're using Remind, whether you're using chat features with signals, um, whether you're using hand signals, I have no idea. That's when we probably could talk about, um, and we probably will when Lynn comes. She's going to be doing one of our boosters with us, Lynn Bray. So that's the way the students are looking at it. I guess I would. I'm really interested in getting more information on that. Uh, maybe that's another way we can uh, get even better with distance learning. Um, using the four questions again, we've kind of used those more as uh, redirects in classrooms. And we'd love to see more of us use those as if we're teaching them to the kids, what are you doing? What are you supposed to be doing? What are you going to do about it? You know, the four we use um, and using wait time. And again, I'm not quite sure how to use that in a distance world when you're not using Zoom and can't send them individual chats. Maybe remind is the way. Um, so that's how the kids are looking at it very similarly. Um, this has to do with uh, greetings and all the things that we do and having kids help model that. Uh, this is building leadership capacity amongst our students and the way kids are viewing it right now They feel like some of that's going on consistently Some of it might be going on sometimes and there's a little bit where it's not happening at all And that makes me scratch my head a little bit because the more we can empower our kids the more um, They're gonna buy into being learners. That's just the way it is you guys um, I end every class with a motivating story quote poem mantra commitment um, and the way the kids are looking at it is very similar. Uh, that's something we want to get better at, is making sure we're sending the kids off um, in a good space. And that's really important. So next steps, I want you to celebrate um, with your students this week. This is the last week you'll see them. Some of them you won't see again. Some you won't see till February. But make sure you let them know they've done a great job in a difficult time. And when we start second quarter, revisit the standard of social contracting with your students. Want to make sure we don't have any slippage um, and continue to excel like we are. Um, I want you to find a growth opportunity for your Excel. Mine is going to be that last one, the launch. I want to pick that one for me. Don't pick more than one. Just pick, figure out one that you can be really intentional, um, whether, that, whether that's social contracting, whether that's greeting, whether that's launching. You decide for yourself. So with that, I am going to launch you, and I want to let you know I really thank all the work. Uh, I want to thank you for all the work you've done this quarter um, in preparation and just all the things you guys have been juggling and uh, making things right for kids at school. Um, I know the kids are appreciative. The parents are appreciative, and just keep doing what you're doing, and, and let's have a great end of first quarter, and we'll start off second quarter with a bang. Thank you.